Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Our question today comes from Jim, KE0NRE. And he is uh, asking about the concept of forward power, reflected power, on a coax transmission line in situations where antenna impedance and feed light impedance don't match. What I don't understand when I insert a watt meter between my transmitter and antenna feed line is the difference between P forward and P ref readings the power reaching my antenna. How does a common mode current on the outside of the coax shield affect P forward and P reflected readings? Interesting questions. Let's take a look at what he might be using. This is an MFJ849. Okay, it's a, a digital SWR and watt meter and measures the forward power, the reflected power, and gives you the computed SWR, which is easy to compute from the forward and reflected power. And it's got two ranges one is HF and one is VHF, okay? It needs 12 volts to operate, so we're just using this little battery here. Now let's look at a diagram here. We'll take our coax, okay, and we're gonna put a, so the coax has a center conductor, and of course this you have grounded in your in your scheme. Now for something like this you can just simply loosen one of these bolts right here and attach a ground to that and that's what I would suggest doing. Okay now forward power if you've got a transmitter over here let's go ahead and put in a transmitter it's going to be feeding out. Now you've got an antenna that has um, resistance. This is called the radiation resistance. It has resistance which is the ohmic resistance of the wires. <coughs> it has capacitance and it has inductance. Okay. So it's going to be slightly reactive, either capacitively or inductively. And when you get those two to exactly cancel out, then the antenna is resonant. Okay. Meaning there's no complex part being reflected, but these resistors may not add up to 50 ohms, in which case you will have uh, a non. Uh, the SWR will be something other than one, be higher than one. If you can keep it under about 1.6 to 1, you're doing really well. Okay, so the forward power comes here, goes through, and hits this. It's 50 ohms, and it is purely resistive, so it has a phase angle of zero, okay? Now, the reflected power comes back the other way. Because this is not a mismatch, we store energy in the reactive components, and that energy is transmitted back. And this is the reflected power. So this is, uh, you can see it as a voltage, usually, or as uh, power. Either way you want it. Uh, if you're going to do it as power, it'll be referenced 50 ohms. <clears throat> so that's the reflected. And this is the, the forward. Now if you don't have a tuner, the situation you have is that this reflected power will come right back into the power amplifier over here. The power amplifier will then dissipate it as heat. And transmitters have 
circuits designed <clears throat> to keep lowering the power so that the reflected power is in the range of what the transmitter can handle. And if you've got about a 1.6 to 1 SWR or less than that, you're good. Now, some rigs have built-in antenna tuners. Let me show you what happens in an antenna tuner. Antenna tuners are often, well, they're made entirely of reactive elements. Okay, so I'm going to give you a schematic of a typical um, tuner. This is called a T-tuner. This is ground here. And then this goes through another capacitor and then to the antenna, which as I said before, has got two resistors. Um, this is the part that you want to be 50 ohms and you want this to be zero. This is the radiation resistance. This is the ohmic resistance. And then it has some um, reactive elements, okay? Now, this is the tuner, and these are all variable, including the coil is variable. Okay, this could be inside the radio and be automatic. Uh, I also have an automatic external antenna tuner, and I have an external uh, that's manual. And what you need is an SWR meter between the transmitter and the tuner, okay? Because what you want to do is to get this down as low as you can. In fact, sometimes I'll just look at the reverse power and get it down to zero. You got three knobs. How do you adjust those? Well, usually you do the inductor to get closest and you put these in, at midpoint, do these to get closest, make an adjustment on this one, which will cause this one to be off, so you adjust that, and then you go back and forth between these until you can't get a lower SWR. Sometimes you do have to change this one here, but mostly uh, picking the, uh, a good point for that. Now, you can do a fairly good job of a pre-tune on your antenna by using that antenna tuner that you've got there that you can manually adjust by adjusting it for maximum noise in your headset. Because that will indicate that from the point of view of the antenna coming into the radio, you've got a pretty good path. It's not a good idea. So what actually happens in an antenna tuner when you have it properly tuned? I'll show you. Here goes your forward power to the antenna. Here, coming back, is your reflected power, which gets captured by these. Remember, these are reactive elements. They can store energy. And then the next time you have a reflected peak coming along, this is put on top of that, okay, and goes back over there. Now, some keeps coming back this way, okay, and it keeps reflecting at ping-pongs back and forth. It's like playing catch between the two, uh, the antenna, anal, uh, antenna tuner and the antenna. Now, the SWR to the transmitter is very good. It's very good. Uh, but this can be very bad SWR in here. And the problem that you get is that this, because this is a resonant circuit, it's not just this that's a resonant circuit. It is, and uh, well, let's use blue. This 
right here is the load on the transmitter. It looks like one to one. All the um, signal that's sent out doesn't come back over here. But it does stay in here going back and forth like this. This is called a circulating current and it can actually be quite high. And so if you've got like a 10 to 1 SWR over here, it'll look 1 to 1 here, but you're putting tremendous currents, tremendous circulating currents between the parts here. And this can lead to high loss on your transmission line. And um, you're not as efficient getting it out to here because you've got the high loss here, you've got loss here too, and so on, because of the very bad mismatch. By the way, whatever the, um, this is some impedance, and I'll draw this as a value followed by an angle. This is your impedance of the antenna. This, when tuned, will have the same Z, but minus uh, theta, okay? Um, that doesn't look very much like a minus sign, does it? There, minus theta. In other words, they are complex conjugates, which you don't need to know what it means for this, but this gives you an idea of what's going on in your system. And the reason that you'd like to build an antenna that is already pretty close to being matched, so that when this matches it the rest of the way, the circulating currents are not very high. But you can get a lot of loss in there if you're dealing with some weird antenna and uh, you're getting high circulating currents. Okay. He has one more question. And this has to do with common mode current. Let's take a, a, a dipole. Okay. And this comes down to your tuner and then the radio. Ideally, there is a ballon here or at least a choke ballon. The idea being that current can either run in the center line of the coax or on the inside of the coax braid. If you don't have the ballon there, to go from um, this is balanced to unbalanced, hence ballon. Okay, you can get some current coming back on the outside of the braid. Now, if you're connected directly to your radio, that will come in, connect to the ground side, the chassis side of the radio, and can cause havoc. What you want to do is make sure this is grounded. Make sure that you go out through a lightning surge protector, which is grounded. And that will bleed off all of the stuff right here. Okay. Note that any, if this is not grounded, that current can flow around the tuner and into the radio. You need these grounds here to keep the thing working or put a ballon up there. Now, I have uh, personally. I have personally not had good luck with balance at the feed point of dipole antennas. That does not say that it is not best practice to have a ballon there. It is, okay, but ballons are heavy and so you've got to either prop up the center of the antenna or use it in, as an inverted V or something like that. I note that the DXCC antenna by um, Alpha Delta does not have a ballon at the center. Uh, most of your ready-made uh, half-wave dipoles, center-fed half-wave dipoles don't. 
uh, some do, you can put one in. Uh, I know, for example, that the reference antenna, uh, which is part of our reference station here at dkassler.com slash reference, that lists all the parts and pieces for an HF station. The antenna in there is the MFJ2010, which contrary to its numbers works on 20 and 40, covers both of those bands, also 10 and 6, but it's uh, 40 and 20 that are the most important right now. It's less than $100. And it not only has a classical ballon, but it has a um, current ballon. In addition to that, to make the off-center fed antenna work properly. So there you have it. Uh, lots of things going on in uh, this question. Very interesting question from Jim KE0NRE, um, James uh, McNamee. And I hope that helped with what you're trying to do. So for those of you who have watched this far, I recommend subscribing to this channel. Uh, if you want to get notifications of future videos, click the bell. Uh, notice those are two different things. You've got to subscribe to click the bell, but you don't have to click the bell if, if you want to subscribe. On the YouTube page, there's a list of the subscriptions you have, and you can go in there and check for new videos. I usually put out several videos a week. Now, the other thing that uh, you can do is go to decastlercom support and help provide uh, channel funds to keep us going here on this end. Uh, pay the assistant, pay lots of things. So um, until we next meet, 73.